when we or when I go into the internet and I search the top 10 leaders in business and entrepreneurship, these are the top 10 names that I see. When I do a search for the top 10 business leaders or science innovators or those that win the Nobel Prizes, these are the leaders that I see. As an African and more especially as a woman, I ask myself, where are we? Most importantly, why is it that we do not make these lists? So why is there such a conversation around women, around Africa, and around development in the African continent? We all know that there's currently a development going on in terms of new technology that are being put into our continent as well as our natural ex resources still being exploited as young Africans. In addition, there's this whole new buzzword that's going around called the fourth industrial revolution. And in a lot of the conversations that I get invited to, to talk about the fourth industrial revolution, many of the people ask me, what is it? The second question they ask me is, what happened to the other three revolutions? And the third question that they ask me is, what does this mean for Africa in terms of jobs, in terms of skills, and in terms of development? But what they lack to ask themselves is, what about women? And what does this mean for us as the next African leader? So, here it is. Would you believe me if I said that the next African leader will somewhat look like me? Hear me again, not me, but somewhat like me. So when you look at me, whether you see a certain gender identity, whether you see a racial type, or if you see that I'm from Africa, we are the least represented in leadership in terms of business and in terms of science currently in the African continent. So this makes me ask myself that given these gender gaps in both the business and the science sector, what crazy conviction do I have that makes me think that the next leader will somewhat look like me? Every time I think about it, when I convince myself that I started a nonprofit organization called Black Women in Science with the aim of empowering these women to take up these leadership positions, I ask myself, what motivation do I have given the disappointing statistics that we have in empowering women into these positions? When you look into international organizations such as NASA that had to cancel their all-female first spacewalk because they did not have spacesuits that were designed for women. It makes me ask myself, what are we doing as an African continent or as a society to make sure that our next African leader actually looks like me? And so, when we look at the statistics in South Africa or in Africa generally, you can see that the women take up um, almost 50% of the population, making us almost the majority. So what actually happened here? And why is it that we are not seen into these leadership positions? As a student doing her PhD in climate change and agriculture, I have learned more than anything the need for us to tailor make our solutions to better suit Africa to tailor make them to solve problems in our communities for Africans, by Africans. But yet, we are not seen in these topics. So a lot of the time people ask me, and the work that I've done, people ask me, why is it that you want so much diversity? How do you know that there's going to be change? How do you know that there's actually going to be an impact? I have a case study for us. Her name is Professor Jova. She is the head of clinical medicine at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. For the longest time, the story around African hair has been told by non-Africans, hence the lack of understanding which we've had as a society. And because of this, we have had products being sold that are not actually designed for us because our narrative as Africans is not being told by Africans. So she discovered a gene that contributes to the cause of permanent hair loss amongst the African descent. There is no doubt in my mind that her unique history, her background, her unique exposure influenced the type of topic and interest that she had 
in African hair and in the African descent. So as much as stories like Dr. Jova are exciting with her academic accolades, and also hearing that the first female president in Ethiopia has just been elected is exciting for women. But I can't help myself but to be sad and say, this is only happening in the 21st century. Secondly, I ask myself, what have we actually missed in all these years because of the lack of women? The new ideas that they come up with, the new innovation that they come up with, we actually miss it because we haven't given them this leadership. So in the pursuit to understand how do we actually empower these women and how do we actually draw their interest into these sectors, I had started an organization called Black Women in Science. And in this organization, we do a lot of work trying to understand these women, these modern women. I like to call them the modern scientists. The focus is on scientists and emerging researchers because that's my, that's my sector and that's my industry. These women have shown us so much and they actually made us see through a needs analysis that we do in asking them what kind of skills do they want, what kind of development do they want as young Africans coming up in the continent. It was interesting for me because as a scientist, the whole lot of the time I've been told that if you're a scientist, you must stick to your science and you must stick to your box. Interestingly, these women say no. These women want to look in their science careers as well as incorporate themselves and understand themselves in a bigger picture like business as well as do impact research that looks into the social, the community, and the well-being of their own communities and their own people in South Africa or in Africa in general. This I call the multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary thinker of a woman. So how is it then are we attracting these leaders to be our next leaders if the design and the model of the actual industry is not actually for them or interest them to get into the industry? So there's a need to redesign and re-understand that we need to first of all change our perspective, second of all we need to change uniforms, and third of all we need to change how we design these working hours for these women so that they are sorted and they are able to work within these conditions. There's another important point that I thought that we could add then if we're saying these are African leaders. Professor Jova could have easily done her research as, it's break, as it did its breakthrough internationally, but it, she didn't. She decided to come back into Africa and make it a priority to make her voice heard as a young researcher. So there's an element of African renaissance that we need to add in. And African renaissance is the awareness of our worth as an African mind, being aware of our history and being aware of our value as Africans, given our history and our uniqueness as individuals. Once we start uniting ourselves in terms of our African awareness, incorporating these multidisciplinary thinkers of women and attracting them into these sectors, we'll start seeing a change. So I ask you today that when you go home and you search for the top 10 leader in business, and when you go home and search for the top 10 leader in science, does she look like this? And your answer will be no. Ask yourself today, what is it that you can do into understanding our next African leader? If you are an industry that can change a model, change a design, make sure that whatever change that you do is influencing the African next leader. Thank you.